Lisa Gifford here and Linda Winter. How are you? <laughs> Thanks for joining us again. We got Margo here and she is behind the scenes doing all of our moderating. And she's got to let us know if Valerie pops in yeah. and if Alta pops in. Alta. Right, Margo? Um, I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You we, said uh, Alta snuck in and you didn't realize it last yeah. time. No, I didn't. Yeah, Alta so, snuck in. Yeah. All right. So, so welcome to our class today. And we are, everything is about with love and we are a hot mess up here. So let me, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> we we have... We had two broken needles. I've got a broken <laughs> finger, basically. Yep. I'm stitching and having hand cramps like you cannot believe. Five <laughs> seconds before we went to lunch because you got some fabric so we can cut some hearts. So I'm bending over trying to find some. So this is going to be a fun groupie. We, I mean, I've got two projects that I'm that I did and I kind of put them together kind of quick. They were in, the one was in my head for a while, so I was really glad to be able to have it come together. <laughs> And then the one you sent me yesterday, <laughs> so <laughs> I put it together today. You saw a sneak peek of it earlier when we were on the air. And then Linda, who is famous <laughs> for all of her plethora of projects, has my, my got dear. Actually, a I bunch did, here. Actually, I didn't have that many heart projects, surprisingly. <laughs> but she you still know, has a lot. Yeah, well, I mean, I've got some. But mm -hmm. And Valerie mentioned that we just got in some of our vinyls. So she wanted us to show some vinyl projects. So I grabbed a bunch of vinyl projects that are not really heart related. But with love, to me, is, mm -hmm. you know, hey, make something in honor of Valentine's Day. But it doesn't necessarily need to be hearts or X's and O's or red and pink because how many days, like Christmas, how many days can you actually use that stuff? So when you're making a cute little, you know, case like this, this is a little vinyl zipper bag. Last year, you guys got a chance to see me make these. It's just a box bottom here. We're basically just doing this adding a zipper on the top. We're going to turn this right sides in and we'll stitch up the sides. You can do a box bottom, but you don't have to. This little project here, I like using zippers for handles. If you've got a leftover zipper, it doesn't have to be that long, but this is this. They're the same thing, but this has a box bottom. This is a little bit larger, but you can see here, the box bottoms are a little bit bigger. So these kinds of guys with all the little dangles and things, you know, yes, it's pink and it's Eastery kind of looking. That's the time of the year that we were doing this last year. But those kinds of things right here, this has hand sanitizer in it. So the hand wipes and the hand sanitizer, you can put a mask in here that you've made. I love using the tape that's the measuring tape that you can find. Again, it's the same kind of thing done super fast and easy. Mm -hmm. A little zipper tab at the bottom here and again the vinyl handle that you can see stitches up really fast and here's another example this has a little bit more in it I've added a little zipper dangle that's just a pair of scissors that you can find so flat ones like that but they turn into different shapes with the box bottom there and you can have this for a pencil case add your elastics Here's another, it's all done out of that vinyl stuff and it's just the configuration and what you add to it. Little kitty, bunny, whatever ears there. So all of these things can be done with the vinyls that we have. So if you've seen our vinyls, uh, we always have a variety of vinyls. Here's one of the ones you had asked about. Uh, the humbag. <laughs> the humbag. This yeah. is one of my favorite ones to make just um, because... This one just always blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And what do we make this for? Our rotary cutter. Mm -hmm. So you can see I've got my left-handed cutter in there, but all we're basically going to be doing, you know, this is fabric. Let's pretend. We're adding the zipper. We're stitching this way, and then we're going to stitch this way. So we've stitched that down, so if that makes any sense. I did this last year, so it's really not cool. something totally new to Martelli. Um, you can go back and watch, but if it's something that you want me to do later on, we can do that as well. Here's another one of the vinyl projects that I did last year. Your pencils, your fabrics, your fat quarters, your tools, whatever it is that you're doing, you know, the project that you're working on, you can coordinate the fabric or make this plain so that what you're putting inside here pops. Add your grommets on top if you want to put it in a notebook. So those are super fast. This is really similar to this. This little guy here, instead of having, see the nice little glitter on there, you can add just regular old clear plastic 
and this can be again for your projects add a binding or not this is a faux binding it's wrapped around from the back side to the front this is one that our friend Dennis made this is an in the hoop design but you can see here this guy here when you look at this it's vinyl so vinyl can be sewn you just need to test your machine and make sure that your machine will let you do that just like vinyl we also have this kind of material these are from Darla and Darla had a great tip when you're sewing this mesh stuff and vinyl together it works the same way if you're sewing two of these and you're doing a box bottom you're a whole lot smarter to do fabric for the box bottom and this fabric and mesh fabric and vinyl instead of vinyl vinyl or mesh mesh it's easier to sew through one layer of fabric and one layer of the vinyl the mesh the whatever it is so when you're making these these cute little bags again your rotary cutters are perfect to go inside of here any of these things that you're making think about instead of it being all this is the material we're talking about how cool is that instead of sewing these guys together these edges together put in fabric on one side so you've got one side of this and then sew it to fabric that's going to yeah. be a little bit easier on your machine yeah. so if any of you have, have had problems sewing two layers of this together think about adding a layer of material on top of here so you're only sewing through one layer but this is one of the sheets that we just yep. got yep. in stock and they're and a whole lot of fun got a whole bunch of colors i bought this i have to tell you i didn't make this i bought what? this this is i know <laughs> i'm gonna knock i'm gonna <laughs> knock it off it's a fanny pack but look how cool that would be yeah I don't wear fanny packs because I don't need anything accentuating <laughs> anything <laughs> on me. I love it though. But this elastic here, that's the kind of, it's not elastic. <laughs> this is the, Let's but I see. would do elastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would do elastic, but this right here, this is the strap kind of material. You can do the adjustment on there, but I sure think elastic that's for your pants, mm -hmm. the waists of your pants. If any of you grew up making clothes like I did, you know, that wider one inch or an inch and a half inch elastic, I think would be really great. But I'm gonna to try to come up with a way to make this at some point in the future if y'all are interested. Um, let me show, am I gonna do my projects and then just yep, pass it over yep. to you? We'll, okay, we'll do that. So I found years ago a little prayer pocket and I thought, how cute is that? Take your blocks that you've worked on and maybe they didn't turn out as nicely as you wanted or you had extras and just use our heart templates. We'll look at the sizes in a couple minutes. You can add a cross on there if you want or a little heart or a little whatever Cupid or angel or whatever it is. But in the back, you're adding a pocket and then you can have the prayer of the day. You can have a gift card if you don't want it to be so much of a prayer, but a gift card in there, whatever it is for Valentine's, a thing of M&Ms or some Hershey Kisses or whatever, those kinds of things. The same idea was done like this. Again, just taking blocks that I had before I pieced down the center and I changed the heart shape a little bit. It's really easy to do with the templates, but my plan was to have it for tea. Well, look, tea doesn't fit in there. So <laughs> measure your tea bag. You can tell I don't drink tea because I didn't measure the tea bag. I thought tea bags were little. I guess they are, but it's the packaging that's not so much. But I thought, how cute is that going to be for a tea bag? And then I'm like, where's my tea? Where's my, I had some tea as samples. So, you know, take this out before and figure out how long that pocket should be. The other thing that I thought would be cool to do with this too is add a grommet here. And then you can put that on a little keychain or a little strap mm -hmm. or just have a little dangly or whatever. With that same concept in mind, this is the one that I was trying to hand stitch really fast and that was just killing me. This just is one of our, needle oh my God, look at this. I mean, my, <laughs> I, I have no idea how this finger hurts so much because it hardly does anything. But this right here, you, you'll use one of our larger heart templates, the largest heart template of the bundle that I have. And this is just one of the fabrics that you got in your, if you got the mystery kit from us for Valentine's, this mm -hmm. is a mystery fabric. I don't think this one is, I'm not sure, but I've just added ribbons and lace and little buttons and those kinds of doodads and all of that stuff and then a solid fabric. But I added a pocket up here. And the pocket here, you can put a note in there, you can put a gift card, you can put a you know ticket to a movie or whatever it is, but then you'll hang this on a door or hang this wherever. Add sachets, you can make it in smaller sizes as mm -hmm. well. So those kinds of things. One last project I think that I have, and this one is a heart that's flat 
And it's the same concept, but what I ended up doing was taking all my old hankies. I have a ton of old hankies, and this one had Nevada and Utah on it. So here's Nevada, and you can see with some of the embellishments that I have, there's Vegas. You all know our favorite twins Jesus. that we have, our favorite sisters, and this says, sisters forever. So G and Sherry, <laughs> this is for you when you all come into town. <laughs> There's a little dangle, and you can see there, this guy right here, we're going to take a look. This that you see here, all of that, the ribbon, all of that, you can see, you can add all of those embellishments that you might have in stock. But the hankies, I think, would be a whole lot of fun. Here's a hanky that I had on the back. And what's really fun about our heart templates is you can take this template and basically fussy cut with this right there in the center, mm -hmm. too. So let's take a look at how we use the templates to cut. So our template set comes with four hearts in there. They're nested. So we basically have like this, like this, like this. So these guys, the 10 inch, the eight inch, the six inch, and the four inch. And we're going to use the fold of the fabric and you can choose to do batting. I did batting on all of the projects that I worked on, but what I did for the batting was I just went ahead and cut a rectangle for my batting. So I didn't have to worry so much about that. All right, so you can see right away, I'm having a mistake in the way that I've turned my fabric. So we're gonna fold it over this way. I would, of course, not waste any of this fabric over here, so I changed the fold, but since I've got a crease here, we'll take advantage of that. When we go to cut, if we are gonna fussy cut anything, then I would have folded the fabric on that fussy cut. So if I had something right here, I'd fold the fabric and then that would be the fold that I'd be placing this template on. So that way I could make sure that it was centered inside of there. So you can use that fold, since the fabrics are gonna be cut on the fold, you can use the fold to help you fussy cut. Inside of here, nothing's gonna happen with this. We're gonna cut around that. And as we cut, we're just gonna move the template. Lisa's done videos, I've done videos. When you get to here, just make sure that this is lined up with that fold. And as you go to cut, it's gonna give you a heart. You can cut out one heart and then everything else, when you go to stack those, you don't need to cut anything else. You'll just cut a rectangle and you're basically gonna have your one that's already been cut and lay it on and it becomes kind of your coloring book outline mm -hmm. to be able to do that. So our templates here, the four, the six, the eight, and the 10. If you don't have these already, you need these. And then we have a larger one too. Oh yes. So the Did larger I one. Brought it, I think. If you're doing any pillows, I had pulled out some, oh, what is it called? Um, you know, the old robes that we wore? Um, remember those robes? I never yeah. wore one. My grandmother had one. What's the, Ch the robe? Chenille. Chenille, is it chenille? Why does that not sound right? I mean, it is chenille, but remember at Christmas time, the trees that we did, that mm -hmm. cream um, tree that I did out of that chenille, that same material I had pulled out to make a big heart pillow. Where is it? At home with all of my stuff that I forgot, of course. So this guy here is a great one for pillows, for all kinds. Oh yeah, look at this. Yeah. So how cute that is that? with it. All right, so, and this is just free motion quilted. You can do this on your sewing machine. You can do whatever kind of channel stitching that you want to do, but the heart templates are going to be really a good start for you. This wall hanging, I mean, that was a, actually the very first project I did for Martelli, and I have no idea how many years old it is, but that's why I came to the store and Valerie said, here's some hearts and here's some lips and make me something. Yeah, so, I was going to say, before yeah, you even yeah. came to work for yeah, us, you were I making came to work, those. I made that. So, yeah. That was where she'd hand me the hearts and the lips, and that's what I did. So Isn't we got the lip templates over here. And so here's just some of the other heart things that, you know, as we're talking about the hearts, this was something I had made last year. And this was just a simple where I had done a four patch and just cut out the heart. And this was, here's a little zipper bag that I had done, nothing to it with, with the vinyl, just nothing, nothing to it. Even made, cut out the little vinyl and made the little strap with it. There's actually a video on uh, uh, YouTube, uh, Creating with Martelli, where I show you how to make 
these little heart pot holders and how easy they are to do. And I think we even referenced it just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, we on did. On making these heart mm -hmm. pot holders. Yeah, so absolutely. We'll and there's aside. lots of different ways to do the pot holders. I did a video on one. I'm going to grab this for a minute. Mm -hmm. And mine, the fabric was folded back here at an angle, so at an angle this way. So it's a little bit easier to get your fingers inside. So, and that's on the YouTube channel from Martelli and then also my uh, Linda, Linda Videos YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, so we've got lots of way. videos. You talked about the heart, I mean the lips. So let's yeah. take a look at the lips templates. The lippy templates. These were, these were absolutely so much fun to make these little, this is where I learned how to do zippers a little bit better because <laughs> I'm not a zipper girl. And I think I've said that several times. I think so. Yep, yep. I, I, I do not, I'm not a big, big fan of zippers. I know how to do them. I just don't. I just struggle with zippers. So these are just a few of these little, of these, this size I hid here. And again, it's one of those templates that you put it on the fold and you could, you'll, you'll see this is done where it's just, where I don't even cut out the middle section right here. So it, it's just real easy to do. And then I don't, I don't know. I can't go. I can go on and on. Yeah. Just a great So project. you can see there's directions on the back here, mm -hmm. too. And then we have green this lips. This one was for, done on lip, too. Yeah. We have green lips for St. Patrick's Day, I found Day the green too, ones right? yet. They're so, somewhere yeah. here where I did the big green ones and said, kiss me, I'm Irish, you know, so something like that. And I did it similar to this. This right here is a big pillow, yeah. so I had done. Yeah, yeah, applique is a whole lot of fun with this. And if yeah, you have an embroidery are. machine, terrific. But you can always hand stitch if you enjoy doing that, Amy. We know you do. So <laughs> remember, if you go to our Martelli um, YouTube channel, there's a playlist called Creating with Martelli. And you'll see a lot of those videos there. So anything yeah. that's project specific, you'll see there. All right, do we have any other projects back in the back that we're showing? Or are you ready to start stitching? <sighs> Well, you, well, did I you show this, this little cute, guy? This one, I did show that little that guy. Cute? I don't know if yeah, I have any other Valentine projects. Up I think here. we pulled them all. Yeah, We've got we one over on the wall. When we pan, pan yeah, over to we'll look at in. your um, bed. Bed. bed runner. I want to call runner. it a pillow topper, but it's a bed, <laughs> bed runner. runner. It's a bed so, runner, yep. but it also could be a table topper but, or a table runner. But I, I think it's about the right size that I would use for a bed runner. So I'd have it, you know, quilted and put on the foot of my bed. So I'm going to talk about that. And then I also have the... So which one do you want me to do? The I want to show this really oh, yeah, fast because I forgot to, to show this. So this is made from our circle templates. And this is another project that Darla made. My goal was to get a heart done, and it just didn't happen. I think this heart here, the 8-inch, would be perfect for this. The 6 one might work as well. But basically, I want you to imagine that through here oh, yeah. that you've got that zipper. So it's basically going to be going this way. So imagine you've got your heart on the front and your heart on the back. So you've got a zipper that's going kind of from corner to corner. And I think that would be really, really yeah. cute. And there are directions out there online that show you how to do this with paper templates. What makes this so good is that it's the no slip material. Remember, when you see a project that's done with a paper template or an acrylic template, if we've got a template that has the no slip, you're going to use the same directions. It's nothing new. It's just the cutting is going to be more accurate, more consistent because of that no slip material. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to walk you over to, we're going to start with uh, X's and O's, X heart O, uh, little, um, the bed runner. I'm going to grab my stuff for it because I kind of jotted down how, how I made this, but I wanted you to know that this was pretty much made entirely with this jelly roll roller. I cut my 10 inch strips with this. I cut my five inch, then, then subcut those into the 10 inch blocks or squares. And then I used it by five inches. I did my two and a half inch strips. I did my one and a half inch strips. The only time I didn't use it was when I was cutting two inch strips, but I actually used it because I lined it up on the two inch line. But I pretty much made this entire little project right here out of using this jelly roll roller. So I don't even have a name for it. I'm just call X's and O's with the heart. So I had the heart in the middle. Now, one of the things I want you to know is that this is a project that can be easily broken down into other size segments of what you would use for your, for your squares. This one here, is done with a 10 inch square. So the main fabric is a 10 inch square. 
The background fabric, which is the covered corners here, those are done with five inch squares. So whatever your center square is going to be, the other, the covered corners are going to be half that size. So if you say make a, a eight inch square, if this main square is eight inches, then your covered corner is going to be a four inch square. If it's a six inch square, then it's going to be a three inch square and vice versa, just so that you know whatever that covered corner is. So to make this project right here, you're basically going to need this one here, which is done with 10 inch squares, required about a yard, a yard of the main fabric. You're going to need about a yard of a background fabric and about a third of a yard of an accent fabric. And that was this little, this little one and a half inch border that just kind of framed it in right here. And this can, like I said, can be any colorway. To make this, I had to cut out 10 or 12 10 inch squares. So 12 10 inch squares. And I just was able for one strip set. So when I cut a strip set that was 10 inches by width of fabric, I was able to get four. So you're going to need to cut three of those to be able to get 12. So this is my 10 inch square. You're going to need 12 of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So you need 12 of those. And then you're going to go ahead and with your background fabric, you're going to need a couple little things. You're going to need five inch squares, but you're also going to need two 10 inch squares. So you need 20 five inch squares. So with my jelly roll ruler, I just cut me a five inch strip. I think I maybe cut two of them so I could get all of my five inch squares. You need to have 20 five inch squares and then two squares that are 10 inches. So I have, have those. And then for the backgrounds here, which is going to be this strip here, these strips here, you're going to need uh, one strip that's two and a half, two inches. That's what I used for right here and here. That's what I had that's separating each of the blocks. And then you need five strips that are two and a half inches. That's what made the perimeter going all the way around. It's my first border that goes all the way around. And then you're going to need six strips of one and a half inches. And that's what I use for this black background. And this was so simple, easy, so easy, easy, easy. So how do we make this? So here is my red block. So I got my 10 inch square. Every single one of the X's and every single one quadrant for the O's is done the exact same way. So you can do it two different ways. You could go ahead and with your white square, you're going to be putting one on each opposite corner and then you're going to be sewing those down. I call them covered corners. I don't even know if that's the correct term, but you're covering the corner with the, with the fabric. Did you know if there was another name for it, Linda, other than oh, covered sure. corner? Mm -hmm. I wasn't quite sure. So there's two different ways that you can mark your fabric. You can go ahead and on the wrong side, you can draw a line corner to corner. And then you're going to set it here onto um, your fabric. And then you're going to sew on that line. I also like using it where I will press my corner. So I will put my fabric and fold it where I will put, you'll fold it wrong sides together. And I will press a crease line right there. Snowball corners. Is that snowball corners? Mm -hmm. Snowball corners, that could be it. So then when I lay this onto my fabric right here, now I got my little valley right there. I can go ahead and stitch. And you're going to do that on the opposite corners for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, for eight of them. Because when I get this done, it's just a matter of way you turn that block to give or get you the X or to get you the O because here's your opposites here. Here's your opposites here. So the way the block is turned, create your X. The way the block is turned, create your O. The heart's a little bit different. So with the heart, you're doing the covered corners here. So if I go ahead, I'm going to press this one so that you can see what I'm doing. The heart is done a little different. So your heart is done like, sure, I got that right like that. So on two of your red squares, you're going to have it 
look like this. So once you sew it and then you trim it, it's going to have that look. So that's this block here, and that will be this block here. So you still have to do one corner, but then you're just doing this, the, the other side corner instead of the opposite corner. So you cover corner, what would we call it again, Margo? Snowballed. Snowball, mm -hmm. snowballs, cover corner snowballs. So you're going to put them on here. Now this one right here is different. This is where you need your two 10-inch squares and your two red-inch squares. So you're going to just take, same thing, you're going to go ahead and press it right sides together. You can press it or you can draw your line. You might want to draw your line since this is a lot longer of a seam that you're sewing. But you're going to do the same thing and you're going to repeat that exact same thing with the red. You're just going to put it on there. It's almost like you're making one giant half square triangle. So you're just going to sew right there and that when that is, uh, well, I did it wrong way. I would have done it with the wrong sides together. So when I have it sewed and trimmed, so that is my piece that goes right there. So that's how you get your heart. And then you just sew them together like a four patch. So should I, should I sew one? <laughs> I I, let, me, let me just show you how easy it is to do the uh, X's and O's and that way you'll see how I do that. So I find that it's easier if I either draw my line or I press my line where it's the wrong sides are together because it's easier to sew in that valley than it is to sew on that mountain. And then another thing that I do that I don't want to waste fabric is once I get my seam sewn and I check it to make sure that it folds back nicely, that I don't have to readjust it, then I'll sew another seam so that when I do trim between those two seams, I have a little half square triangle, so that's not going to go to waste. So let's go ahead and we'll make one. I'll just show you how to do that. <clears throat> oh, here, I need to give you these. Heather wants to know, could you cut that and make both with two squares or would it be a half inch off? Pardon me? I know. Say the question again. Could you cut that and make both with two squares or would it be one half inch off? I'm not sure what she's... I think it would be off. Yeah, it would, I think it would be off from the bottom for the bottom all right so I have on this one I have my machine set up for um, where I've got my needle in the middle and I just had my press seam I'm just lining up my edges I have my stitch in the middle and I am just going to sew right onto or just maybe a thread over from my crease that I like like that I've done and I just sew all the way down right sides together and before I do any cutting or trimming I'll fold this back to make sure everything lines up and you can even take the time and just sort of press that press it back And iron's not hot, but press it back. And if, if everything's looking like it lines, lining up properly, covering completely on the edge, then I go back and I will sew a second line right here. I will sew another line about a half inch from this line. I will sew a half inch over. So when I do that, it's now going to make me another block. but I don't cut in between them until I have already tested it to make sure that that first seam was correct. So I press that back, make sure everything lined up the way I wanted it. And then either with your scissors or rotary cutter, I trim it, but I would go ahead and get the other one done. Same thing, I'm taking the, the fabric that I folded. This could be a line or it could be a fold and I'm just lining up my edges here and I'm gonna sew in that valley. So where I had pressed that crease line in.
Now one, here's a little hint. If you can try to sew just a thread in from that, it's gonna make it line up just a little bit better. And I test it first, fold back that fabric, press it, making sure everything lined up all the way to the edge. And if it looks good, then I'm going to go ahead and put that second seam in right beside the stitch that I had just sewed. And then I just, with your scissors or with your rotary cutter, I just cut right in between. You want to sew that about that half inch so that you don't lose your seam allowance for your edge there. And I do that on both sides. And you could, you could get these all sewed up and just take them over there to your sewing machine or to your, your cutting station and just cut them all apart at once. And that is my block right there completed. And you just have to make 12 of these, whether you're doing it with the 10 inches or whether you're five. And so here's your extra pieces. You're going to have a whole bunch of half square triangles that you'll be able to do something with. So I'm going to show you how this fits onto this uh, bed runner. It just fits right here. So here it is for the X, you make a four. For this one, and then, good catch, turn it a different direction, now you got it for the O. So it's the exact same block, it's just the way you turn it. And then the heart is just two, and then the larger cross right here. And then you're just putting your little uh, side pieces on. I actually took this piece and I sewed it on each side of the heart and then I added the X and the O and then I went ahead and just framed it all in. So that's how I made this. So if you did this with a five inch, remember it's gonna be a two and a half inch covered corner or snowballed. If you do it with an eight, this would be a four. So that's easy, easy, easy. Now if you save all your little half square triangles, just trim them up a little bit, then you can sew them together and make yourself a little secondary block with all those little half square triangles that you're gonna have left over. And this is just a little pinwheel block. All right, so that's that one. <laughs> Do we wanna talk about the gnome too? Yeah. All right, so. so this is the one that Linda's all excited about. Well, I also wanna comment on your X's and O's. Yep. Because originally this was a table runner. Yep. And I think if it were narrower, if you did an X heart O, X heart O. Yeah. You know, three. I think that 10 so, inch block just made it so big. big so yep. if I would have done it probably like in a seven or an eight, it might not been quite as wide as I was going, but in my head, I saw it as a, ten, yeah. <laughs> a simple 10 inch block. And I, what I wanted to do was show how I made the entire thing with the jelly roll ruler, which is one of my absolute yes. favorite rulers in yes. the whole wide world. And I was just gonna mention, if you don't have the jelly roll ruler, remember it's 30% yeah. off, so now's a good time to get it. But yeah. if you're doing scraps, that jelly roll ruler is overkill. So we sell the five inch charms, if you bought a table, you didn't get the five inch because you got a two and a half, a three and a half, a four and a half, a five and a half. Mm -hmm. But we sell a two, three, four, five. That's our small evens bundle. We sell a six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's our evens large square bundle. Yeah. But we also sell a five inch charm and a ten inch layer cake. Both of those will come with the fussy cut frame. And if you have them to me those are really go-to's good go-to's yeah. we buy charms we buy layer cakes they're expensive they're somebody else is doing the cutting for you and if they've used pinking shears then you're actually not getting that full five inch or not getting consistency yeah. in the five inch or the ten inch so you can make your own out of the scraps also the half inch ruler that came with your table that ruler works really well for this project too yep, it does so it's you know, ten pull, inches wide yeah so mm -hmm. pull out the tools that you have again 
you know, you guys know that the no slip material, it's going to make everything you do more accurate, more consistent. And yeah, one ruler would do a whole lot, but there are projects that having that particular ruler, the Jelly Roll ruler, makes such a huge difference. I just but, use it for so much. You know, use yeah. what you have, look at the projects that you have coming up, and if you can take advantage of the Jelly Roll ruler and you don't have it, mm -hmm. that's definitely worth, you know, adding to the arsenal. Yeah. All right, so I sent you All this right. little yes. guy. So she <laughs> sent me. She sent me this little guy, and this is called "You Know I Love You." I don't know when it was posted, but it is a block tutorial bot from Hello Melly, Melly Designs, and it's www.hellomellydesigns right there. I want you to see that dot com, and this is a free pattern, so you could go on there and you can download this, and you can have this for your own arsenal. This is the most a darling little thing. And I want to say it finishes out at, I want to eight, eight and a half by eight and a half. And it's just cute, 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 and very, very easy to do. And again, I pretty much use the jelly roll ruler <laughs> yeah. to cut out most of the pieces <laughs> with this thing. So I have everything right here. This is all the components that you need to make this block. You have to have your main piece. That's this one right here. It is an eight and a half by four and a half. Now, what you just learned over there by doing the, the, ta the bed runner was covered corners or snowballing. You're doing that here, except this now is going to be more of a flying geese. So when you're taking these two projects, these blocks here, they have it, they overlap a little bit. So you got to do one and then you do the other, but it's the same concept. You're going to draw your line or you're going to press your line corner to corner, and then you're going to sew it corner to corner here. But before you can go and do this one, you have to go ahead and have this trimmed and pressed back because when you go to do this side, they overlap a little bit, as you can see right here they overlap a little bit. So this is what a true, this is a flying geese block right here. All right, so you'll make that. And then the next step is you're gonna grab, so if we're gonna make, say, this block right here, this piece right here, you're gonna make two of these, but they're opposite. So you're just gonna take these little pieces right here, and I believe they were cut two by five. Uh, two by five. And then you've got two by two inch squares. And same thing, you're going to fold it and then, well, right, wrong sides together. And then you're going to do a covered corner or a snowball, boom and boom. So they're opposite. And once you have it on there, sewed on, so it'd be like, it'd be like this, you're going to make, it'll be, is that your little thread? You'll make this block <laughs> and this block. So that's what makes these two right here easy pieces. Just remember you're doing One's going left and one's going to the right. So you have those. Now you grab, once you have those done, just set those aside, because now you're gonna work on the heart and the nose component. That's this piece right here, and it's also a mirror image. So you grab your white piece, that's your main one. And that's a three by five. Yep, it's a three by five. And then you got a three by three inch square here. And you're going to do the same thing for the bottom. You're going to fold it or draw your line. In her instructions, she has you draw on your line. So then you're going to sew on that line. You're going to press it back. So you're going to do one. And then you're going to do the other one the exact same way, but in the opposite. So just remember when you sew on your line, going to fold it back and it's going to have that right there. But this block is not finished because you're also doing all four corners. You're going to do the other two corners here. So in the center is where you grab your little pink blocks. This is what makes your little nose. And that's 1.2 by one and a quarter. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I did it by one and a quarter by one and a quarter. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know what that, why it's 1.2. I did, these both are one and a quarter by one and a quarter. So yeah. that's a myth. That is that's got to be a typo. Yeah, that's so. a typo. So it's mm -hmm. one and a quarter by one and a quarter. And I actually didn't have a one and a quarter inch ruler, right except I did. What did I, I use the, um, I don't know. Uh, I used our seam allowance ruler because oh, it's got the quarter inch, but then it's got a one right beside it. So I was able to do the one and a quarter inch cuts with it. And it's the same thing. You're going to do your folding 
and you're going to have it going into the opposite corner of this blue that you had just done. So you're going to have it going here and you're going to have this one going here. So again, you're making a block that is a mirror image. So you see that going there and there. And then you're going to do the same thing with your little bitty blues. So they're also one and a quarter by one and a quarter. And those are right up here. Yeah. So remember, this That's is a this free right download. And what's so cool when you find a really great project, as long as you own any of the Martelli rulers or templates, you can take a free pattern like this and make it your, your own. Mm -hmm. Again, the directions are provided by Hello Millie Designs. Yeah, this was just so darling. M E L L Y designs.com. But again, what makes this so fast and easy is the no slip material means that all of your cutting is going to be accurate. Yep, every one I of love them. our two by 12 ruler because I can take my scraps and use the mat. Our mats are true and accurate, so you can trust the measurements on the mat. So when you've got the three by five, when you've got a two by five, when you've got a four and a half by four and a half, you can use that two by 12 ruler because it's mm -hmm. big enough but small enough. So you can use any of the rulers that you have. You just figure out what you've got right there at your fingertips and what makes this really easy. But I do have one for hint um, for in making this, and I made these two. Um, of course, this first one doesn't have as much seams in it. When you're doing the top piece, which is the, the hat block, you don't have as much seams on it, but it finishes, yes. it's going to be eight and a half by four and a half. But here, you've got a big seam here, you have a seam here, and you have a seam here, and you want it to be finishing out at this side right here. When I did my first one, I'm sitting here sewing at my quarter inch, and it was off. Matter of fact, this was this came in to be a little bit smaller than this one right here. And I thought, what the heck? What did I do? Well, I think I was just a smudge right at that quarter inch. When I did this one, I did a scant quarter. So I just did just slightly less than a quarter of inch, just a thread or two less. And it came out perfect on the money by just doing that scant quarter inch here when I'm sewing these pieces on here, it fit perfectly onto this one. So I don't know how everybody else's machine, but I just did one or two threads over and it made all the difference when I made the second one. Because when I go to sew this together, this is gonna all be um, folded into that seam. So it'll be right there on the edge here. And then you've got your seam allowance here. So it will, it will all look perfect. Yep as it gets all the way sewed in, all, all right, the way so around. So those of you that love gnomes, here is my <laughs> challenge to you. I want you to do a 12 block gnome quilt. What? January, February, March. So January is the snowman gnome. Uh -huh. February is gonna be the Valentine's gnome. March is gonna be the St. Patrick's Day gnome. April is gonna be the Easter gnome. Oh my gosh. On and on and on. This, would be, I this see, little pattern could use for yeah. every color. I wanna see a garden gnome. I wanna see a patriotic gnome. I wanna see a fall gnome. <laughs> I wanna see a summer gnome. If you make that, I will send you something gnome related because I have a lot of gnome stuff. She does. So I don't she need you to does. make the quilt to send to me. I only want to see a picture of a gnome quilt that you have made with, with this the, idea. It doesn't have to be this exact one. I just saw this and thought, this is so simple. I could do it. Mm -hmm. I could do it because so this it's is so the 12 simple. gnome so, challenge. Yeah, so that's it's, 12 it's gnome Lin challenge. Linda's 12 gnome challenge. So if you're up <laughs> for the challenge, I want to see one gnome a month, and I think it would be really cute to do kind of a, a monthly yeah, January, themed, February, you February, know, no, if you like there's a, there's a there's a season, there's a there's something that yeah. you could showcase yeah. for everyone. And if you're part of the month. no gnome kit a uh, club, you know that we Beth. talked about earlier. Yeah, I know several of you do not like gnomes, so that's okay. But I will send you if you send me a picture of a quilt that you have done, and it doesn't really matter when. You just have to remind me that I said this. She's made some really <laughs> cute gnomes too. I have a lot of gnome yeah. stuff because I have you guys that are calling me all the time. Do you have any of this? Do you have any of that? Because, mm -hmm. you know, once you start down that path, you just kind of go down the rabbit hole. And I've been down the gnome hole. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's my challenge. We're pretty oh, much yeah. ready to wrap up because we're getting yep, close yep. to our time. Yep. Um, anything else that you want to share? Any other projects? Nope. nope. I, that that was it. This took up a lot. And we, we're still working on retreat, too. So we really yeah. enjoyed doing this. I really couldn't wait to get into the, the, uh, the workshop today to put this together. And it was actually a lot of fun. So yeah. I, I do, love the idea of your twelve. Uh, yeah, I think it would be really <laughs> cute. I do have a heart project that I'm going to be doing for St. Patrick's Day. So if you all, I know, 
I know. It's going to be like another one of Linda kind of projects. Not an amazing quilt kind of thing, but simple. Hey, Margo, do we have any comments from anybody or any questions that we they need to They are answer? all talking about um, the bed bed yes. the bed runner yeah. Yeah. That that's nice? just the yeah. simplest thing yeah thank yeah. you and and again mm -hmm. that could be change the colors and that could change be you know more for a teenager mm -hmm. you know you don't want to tell your kid i love you but it's a great way to kind of do i love you but you could do it out of for your daughter you yeah, know yeah. day of the dead fabric or something oh like God. that would yeah, that be cool all, about <laughs> all right you guys we have given you a little bit of um from the heart with love so we've done a little bit here and there on Valentine's. post your ideas yeah. what things do you make for valentine's exactly. day what projects yep. do you do because we're kind of like struggling here <laughs> I, you know I, you know we love to hear from you yep go ahead yeah what <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where you're going. I don't know. Yeah. We, love, we love seeing all your projects. So mm -hmm. share with us the kinds of things that you're working on, the yep. things that you know others will love. I love doing the potpourri and sachets and those kinds of things. The hand warmers. I had a little heart hand warmer that you stuff with um, coffee beans or you can put, you know, any kind of beans or corn, deer corn. You know, I like deer corn, that kind of stuff. So yep. you can make those hand warmers. The yep. heart shape is a perfect size to stick in somebody's pocket. So there are lots of different things out there so let yeah. us know what you're working on so as always be sure to like comment share 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 this post tag some friends who might be interested in learning about how we do more valentine's around here with our amazing <laughs> tools and templates here and if you have any comments questions concerns thoughts ideas anything be sure to email us at learn at martelli notions.com learn at martelli notions dot com we would love love to hear from you we have a lot of fun with that so Thanks i think this watching, is a wrap guys. right i think so all right thank you so much <laughs> thank you margo <laughs> bye 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 bye, -bye.